Hey, good morning, everyone. We are the census team. Uh, to start, I'd like to I'd like you all to meet my good friend Dean Gigas. When Dean was 34, he worked a stressful finance job in Boston and had to commute down I-93 every day from Wyndham, New Hampshire. And this commute created difficulties for Dean in his daily life. At his demanding job, he wanted to be very focused. Uh, and at home, he wanted to be more relaxed with his wife. But each day on his commute, he found that being cut off and honked at in traffic really worked him up. And after some of the most agonizing morning commutes, he found himself less agreeable and less productive at work. And certain tra traffic filled evenings frustrated him on the drive home, such that he acted less affectionately towards his wife. He did tell me that sometimes he would combat the negative emotions he felt on the commute by playing classical music on the radio, and it really helped him calm down. And when I shared the story with my group, we knew that if we could build an emotionally aware system in the car to give the driver highly personalized recommendations based on their mood, we would really improve the stress inducing part of many people's day. The chore of a daily commute is not something we need only to put up with. We believe that we can actually improve our experience and enjoy these drives. So just like Dean, we all sometimes become emotional on the roads. In addition to adding stress in, into our lives, driving emotionally actually puts both us and other drivers at risk. A naturalistic driving study found that drivers were 9.8 times more likely to crash when they were driving in a heightened emotional state like anger or sadness. And unfortunately, almost all cars in use today do not have any systems to understand or respond to the driver's emotion in a way that could improve their mood. So when thinking about our target user, we thought that people like Dean who have longer commutes to work and who see their daily commute as an additional stressor in their already overwhelming life would really want some kind of emotionally intelligent and personalized system in their car. So that's exactly what our team came together to create. To briefly introduce our team, we're made up of two university students, Kimia and Yusuf, and two high school students, myself, Wilder, and Shreya. Our wonderful mentor was Samia, and we'd also like to thank our two floating mentors, Chris and Eve. Now Kimia will take over and introduce our solution. So our proposed solution was to create a personalized content and action recommendation system based on the detected emotion of the user in order to enhance their in-car experience and ensure their emotional well-being. So currently, our system con consists of three main phases. It begins with the registration phase, which happens before the user starts their drive, as well as face ID and emotion detection and personalized recommendations. So starting off with the registration phase, this is called the onboarding phase because the user gets to set up their account by setting their preferences and uploading an image of themselves to the database. So once they're registered and in the vehicle, the system will run both face ID and an emotion recognition model. And based on the most highly expressed detected emotion and the user ID, the system can access the database similar to a lookup table and provide relevant content and action recommendations that are tailored to the user. We also conducted a Google survey to better understand our end users and their thoughts on having such a system in their vehicles. We received 60 responses from a wide range of ages and levels of experience. And we found there was around 70% interest in such a system. We also asked them which emotions users often found themselves experiencing, the dominant emotion being anger and irritation. And they also told us about their top recommendation interests, such as music or radio recommendations, as well as physical relaxation techniques, so seat, adjust seat adjustments or haptic feedback, for example, releasing calming incense, as well as climate control and interior lighting, 
suggestions were, or adjustments were also very popular. Our users also provided us with some valuable comments and we discovered there was a general consensus that most people don't like to be commanded or demanded by their car to engage in certain activities. So if you're angry, they don't want to be forced to have to reroute or change their routes or habits entirely. Instead, they'd be interested in having a friendly, empathetic agent that gives suggestions that are extremely personalized and require minimal involvement with the driver so they will not have to be distracted. So in order to do this, we wanted to create a personalized profile for each driver so that they'll only receive the amount and type of recommendations they'd be interested in. Then we began with solution development. So the first stage was to build our own emotion recognition model. We built and trained our own convolutional neural network using TensorFlow and facial expression images from the popular FUR 2013 dataset. And also in order to detect faces from our webcam or video inputs, we had to integrate OpenCV into our model. The next stage was to add a face ID component. So we used a face recognition library that's able to compare facial encodings of registered users with those of new faces. So it'll be able to tell if someone is a registered user or if they're unknown. The last section, main area, was the recommendation system. So our user preferences and profile pictures would have been stored in a data frame beforehand. So our recommendation system as of right now works more similar to a code book or a lookup table than a machine learning engine. Specifically, music recommendations were also implemented using the YouTube API in JavaScript. And to bring this all together, we created a simplified web application using Flask. For our voice agent, we also used a text-to-speech library in Python. So due to the limited time and resources, we obviously couldn't integrate this into an actual vehicle, but we wanted to create a simplified web application that could demonstrate the main components. Welcome, Yusef. My name is Census. Welcome, Kimia. My name is Census, and I'll be your in-car support system for today. Let's have a great drive. Your most highly expressed emotion so far is anger. Playing non-copyrighted classical music. At this moment, Census is not randomly playing classical music. Census knows what Camille needs, so we can give it to her when she needs it. Census knows what all of us need from our profiles. Camille needs classical music to calm her down, and I need electronic music to cheer me up, along with recommendations such as temperature, relaxation techniques, and interior lighting. A personalized recommendation system. Census. Now Shreya is going to take over and talk about the co current competitive landscape. So we found that there are several automotive companies developing similar products, but each one is also somewhat different than what we are doing. Our competition breaks down into two main categories. Those who are developing more general monitoring systems to analyze cognitive states like drowsiness and distractedness, recognize objects or children left behind, which include companies like Affectiva and their occupant state technology, Guardian Optical, Iris, and SmartEye. What sets us apart is that rather than a generalized understanding of the driver, occupants, and surroundings, our technology has a specific focus on improving the driver's emotional state through personalized recommendations from their profile. The second group includes companies who also use biometric monitoring systems and other modalities to develop personalized adjustments for added comfort during the drive, 
such as Hyundai's Kia, Reed System, iSight, and Sensum. What sets us apart is how our technology can be easier implemented in modern day cars without any intrusive biometric sensors. Much of the technology from these companies requires special cars or steering wheels, and these companies work strictly with OEMs and car manufacturers, rather than making a product that can be installed in vehicles on the road today. One competitor that didn't fit into these groups was Serence, which makes a personalized, empathetic voice agent. What sets us apart is that we focus our voice agent strictly on responding to the driver's emotions, while they take a more general approach by understanding the driver's routines and habits. For the continuation of census, there are three main areas upon which we will improve. The first area concerns the recommendation system. In order for drivers to set up their profiles, we will develop a mobile or web application for the registration phase. We will continue to use this platform for census until we can work with automotive hardware engineers to actually integrate our system into vehicles. The actual recommendation system would also be replaced with a more advanced model that could keep a log of the user adjusting, so approving or disapproving of the outputted recommendations in order to effectively bring the user back to their comfort zone. Our next focus would be on the voice agent and the empathetic detection, emotion detection model. We want to enable speech to text to allow for conversations and rapper building between the user and the in-car empathetic agent. As for the emotion recognition model, we would replace it with the multimodal model that also takes into account the voice, words, and gestures of the user when detecting emotion. The final area focuses on census's relationship with the vehicle. Once we integrate census in the vehicle, we will use vehicle data and emotion data together to predict a measure of safety and danger. For example, if the vehicle is swerving and anger is detected on the driver's face, this presents a very dangerous situation. We could also take external cues like traffic or if the user is on the phone or in conversation into consideration when deciding if it's an appropriate time to give recommendations as to not distract or irritate the driver. Progressing in this direction will allow us to sense a safer way to safety. Thank you for listening. We are very grateful for your time and are now ready for questions. Awesome, thank you so much. Great, I had a couple questions. I'm sorry, AJ and Mike, I'm just gonna keep launching into these questions, so please don't <laughs> Okay. Um, so, I was wondering if you've thought about other people in the car, so, and how they might affect the driver, or if this will, are you envisioning it for one day for all of the people in the car, or is this strictly, are you thinking driver only? I think so far we wanted to really narrow down our target user, so it's been focused on the driver only, as in the camera would probably be angled only to capture the facial expressions or the data from the driver, but we think that media recommendations, other types of media recommendations and advertising recommendations could have been uh, applied for other passengers as well. And maybe one day that could be also integrated. Awesome. And I saw in the demo um, recommendations for music and lighting. Was there anything else? <laughs> There were also action recommendations, for example, uh, if they detect anger, they might say, try to relax your shoulders, like physical relaxation techniques, or maybe take a break depending on um, the preferences, whether or not they've specified that in their settings. But because we couldn't really implement that through, like digitally, through a web application, um, you can't really, it wasn't very highlighted in the demo solution video. Got it. My last question, um, where would the camera be placed and did you actually try doing this in an actual car? Like what I saw in the demo, I think you were using your computer, but um, did you actually try it in a car? 
Uh, no, we didn't. But I think it would be placed near the dashboard. Dashboard, OK. Yes. Cool. Mike and AJ, over to you guys. <laughs> Okay, yeah, this is great stuff. Thanks for the presentation and certainly a very needed product. So I liked when you showed the different um, quotations from the users. Um, one of them mentioned personal data. Can you talk a little bit about how you address that specific issue brought up by that uh, feedback? Mm -hmm. uh, one of, like you said, one of the issues was privacy and data collection. So we right now our application runs locally but uh, even if this was integrated in the system, I think we could take advantage of edge computing and running the system locally rather than uh, sending data over the, like over cloud computing. That's a good answer. It's the same answer we give for our customers. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, I have two questions. Um, first one, uh, I guess I got the technical one out of the way. Just in that lighting demo uh, that Wilder had, uh, was that like an Arduino plugged into using the Affectiva SDK? And if so, what was that interface? Because in general, we'll maybe just describe that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, it was using an Arduino. Um, I ran it through our own group's emotion recognition model. Um, and just on the Python script, you can write to the serial monitor uh, onto the Arduino. So I went through that way. And so you so you basically communicated to the Arduino from your your algorithm through the serial communication, and then you you connected to the Affectiva SDK to your you know your algorithm or, or how, how was that connection done? Was it just through the C plus plus API or? Um, we didn't use the Affectiva SDK. Oh, okay, all right. We just used directly off our own train model. Got it, okay, all right. Okay, and then the other question was just as far as revenue goes, like how, how do you guys, how, how is this monetized? I think if we ever gave um, music, like radio recommendations or specific I know if it comes to the passengers, you can give movie or some sort of like other types of content and advertising recommendations. I think that would be a primary source of revenue. To add on to that, so you may have noticed in the video, we could only play non-copyrighted classical music. So YouTube doesn't allow us to use their API and then play copyrighted music. So um, having some sort of like subscription for the music would also allow users to not have to worry about what they're listening to. If that's it for questions, I think we'll take a minute and fill out the forms. Um, so next up are Geeks Vision. So if you guys want to get ready, uh, give us a minute to submit the form and we'll get started with you.